This unit will be about the sun, the moon, the earth, and the relationship that they all have together. We're going to start out describing major features of the sun. Alright, some facts you need to know. The sun, yes, it is in fact a star. It is the largest object in our solar system, and it actually makes up close to 100% of the material. So it's 99.8% of all the material in our solar system. It's made up of 70% hydrogen, 28% helium, and 2% of other metals. All right, and it rotates like how we do every 24 hours. It rotates about once a month, so it spins on its axis, and that takes it one month to spin on its axis. It has great pressure and temperature at its core, just like ours, just like our planet. And it produces energy by nuclear fusion in its core, where it converts this hydrogen into helium for energy. This is just to show you relative size. So you see here is our sun, right? And then relatively speaking, compared to our sun, this is how big Jupiter is. And look, we're just like this little dot. And like Pluto is like barely recognizable as anything. All right, some major parts of the sun are the photosphere. That is our bright yellow visible surface. All right, the chromosphere is the thin reddish layer that sits right above the photosphere. The corona is the outermost layer. So it's kind of like the rays, like when people draw it, think of the rays as the corona. Okay, only visible during a solar eclipse. Sunspots, like up here, are cooler, darker spots on the surface of the sun. A prominence is an eruption of solar material that goes out and comes back again, whereas a flare is an eruption of solar material that goes out into space and ultimately causes our northern and southern lights. All right, so diagram to review. Photosphere, we have the yellowish layer. We have our sunspots, our darker, cooler spots. Our chromosphere is the reddish layer. Here's the corona, right? Prominence, eruption of solar material that goes out and comes back again. Here's the, there's a core, okay? Um, there's no solar flare on this picture. And whenever you hear somebody reference the solar wind, it's this plasma that's continually being released from the sun. And you can see here how it interacts with our Earth's magnetic fields. And here we go, when we have sun's plasma interacting with our magnetic fields, we get these really cool auroras. So here's the view from Earth, and here's the view from space. All right, now we're going to get into some moon facts, and then we'll get into features. So the moon is roughly 400,000 kilometers from Earth, and just like how Earth doesn't orbit in a complete circle, neither does the moon, right? Okay. So it's thought to have been created by the giant impact hypothesis, which is where this Mars-sized object came in, and it hit Earth, and a chunk of it flew off, and then, hey, look, there's the moon. All right, it's about the quarter of the size of our Earth. There's no wind, no water, and no weather. And as seen from Earth, it goes through phases. And this is review, you guys remember tides, moon's gravitational pull on our Earth causes the tides. Alright, like we just talked about, since it's not a perfect circle around Earth, there are points where the moon is closer to Earth, and then there are points where the moon is furthest away from Earth. So just like perihelion, aphelion, perigee is where the moon is closest to the Earth, a or away, apogee, is where the moon is farthest from the Earth. So oftentimes when the moon is closest to the Earth, you'll hear people refer to it as a supermoon because it appears to be larger, because it's closest to us. All right, little review on the tides. A spring tide, remember, causes us to have higher high tides and lower low tides because... The moon and the sun are both pulling on the Earth's water in a parallel linear fashion. Okay, so whereas in a neap tide, right, you have the moon over here and the sun over here. So they're pulling in opposite directions. So there are low, well, not as extreme differences between high and low tide during a neap tide. And yes, okay, think about it, perigee, when the moon is closer, it is going to have more of an effect on the tides because it's closer, so it has more of a gravitational pull. 
So you want to get a really crazy high, high tide. How about a spring tide while the moon is perigee? All right, some moon features. I like to say Maria because Maria, it's a name. Okay, so Maria are the darker areas once thought to be water. We now know them as old lava flows. Okay, the moon has craters, which are caused by meteorite impact. And then there's also these little features called rays, all right, trails of material extending out from a crater, and they're lighter in color. We refer to the, the moon soil or lunar soil as regolith. And then if there's any kind of hills, we call them highlands. As I mentioned earlier, as seen from Earth, the moon will go through different phases, meaning it doesn't always look the same to us, okay? So what this means is as the moon is revolving around the earth, based on where the sunlight is hitting the moon, we're seeing different phases. So a new moon is where we don't see a moon. And then you have a little crescent moon. You see it's kind of like a fingernail or a croissant. A quarter moon is like a half moon. It's not a quarter of a moon. It's just a quarter of the way through its phase. Gibbous is an almost full moon, then we have full moon, and then we go back down. Gibbous, quarter, crescent. And you can see here waxing, okay? So this whole side is described as waxing, whereas this side down here is described as waning. Whoops. All right, so waxing is where the moon is appearing to get larger. So wax on and then wane off. The moon is appearing to become less visible. All right, here's a really cool animation. Before we get started, I'd like to show you that, hey, look, at any given time, half of the moon is always illuminated. Okay, so only half is illuminated at any time. But depending on where it is in its cycle, revolving around the Earth, that shows, that determines what we're going to see of the moon. Okay, so here we go. It's moving around us, and you can kind of see, oh, look, it's getting smaller, so it's waning. Here, we're about to go into a quarter moon, quarter moon, okay, waning. Okay, now look, waning crescent moon. And now right here, when we don't see a moon, because it's the sun's behind it, all right, we're only seeing the shadowed side, that's our new moon. Okay, now again, here, wax on. So we get a waxing crescent, and now we're going to get a quarter moon coming up here. Here's our quarter, and now it's going to go gibbous, and then look how the sun's rays are shining. Okay, so it's going to shine directly on the moon, and we're going to get to see the whole thing, the whole illuminated side, which will appear to us as a full moon. All right, eclipses. So now we're talking about the sun, the moon, and the earth again. Okay, so when the moon is in between the sun and the earth, you have a solar eclipse. So solar eclipse is a moon sandwich. Okay, all right, so eclipses can be partial or total depending on whether the moon is in the full shadow or umbra or the partial shadow or penumbra. And a solar eclipse always happens at a new moon. So you can see in this picture here that you don't actually see the moon, right? Because we're only looking at the shadowed side, but it's just directly in front of the sun so we can see the corona around the sun. All right, now a lunar eclipse is where the moon is on the opposite side, okay? So the moon is in the Earth's shadow. So you have sun, Earth, and then moon. So again, it can be partial or total. If it's partial, remember it's in the penumbra or partial shadow. And if it's total, then it's going to be in the umbra or the total shadow. Okay, so the moon will appear reddish as light bends around the earth and this only happens at a full moon.